Next, death of a partner. <coughs> the adjustments involved in case of death of a partner are very similar to that of a retirement. The area of difference, let us see, what are the adjustments? <coughs> Again, in case of death of a partner, the remaining partners stand to gain. On death of a partner, what happens is, the amount which is due to the partner on account of his capital, on account of his share of goodwill, on account of the joint life policy, on account of revalued profits and losses, all this has to be transferred to his executor's account, <coughs> to the account of the executors. Who are the executors? Executors are the persons who will execute the will of the dead partner, who will protect, who will see that all taxes etc. are paid from the property and ensure that the property, all that belongs to the partner is <coughs> transferred to the legal heirs. <coughs> Now, the adjustments similar to the retirement are that we need the gaining ratio. We will find out the share of goodwill. There will be revaluation of assets and liabilities and the share of accumulated profits and losses will be done. All these are same as retirement. This, another area of difference, however, is that retirement is often at the end of a particular year. He can time his retirement that he retires at the end of the year on 31st March, whenever the accounts are being closed. So very often retirement is usually at the end of a financial year. But death is sudden. It can happen any time during the year. And there is an additional thing that we need to do. Find out the profit in the current year up to the date of death. Profit in the current year up to the date of death. Now, it may not be possible to know the profit. In order to ascertain profit, closing stock may have to be valued, etc. So, what is normally done is that on the basis of the previous year's profit, we assume the profits would be similar or if there has been a trend, we take, we make an estimation roughly of the profit which is expected during the current year and therefore, what could be the profit, estimated profit, up to the date of death in the current year. The share of the deceased partner in this current year's estimated profit is credited to his capital account. This is new. There is of course again joint life policy only on the death of a partner. The amount which is received from the insurance company is not the surrender value but the actual uh, the policy amount. <clears throat> because the policy has matured on the death of any one of the partners, the life, the policy will mature. And there is of course the final payment which is made to the executors of the account. <clears throat> so distinction between retirement and death is that in case of retirement, the amount is paid to the retiring partner Either cash is paid off or transferred to a loan account. But in case of death, this amount becomes payable to the executors <coughs> of the deceased partner. The people who are responsible for the <coughs> properties, persons who are responsible to execute the will of the deceased partner. <coughs> and we need to ascertain the profit in the current year up to the date of death. Also, the joint life policy will mature and the amount received is the the amount received is the policy amount, not the surrender, surrender value. But accounting entries and treatment thereafter is the same. <coughs>